we're going to talk about the muon decay experiments. I like this near physics at the farm. Discovery of the muon or muon. Ha, ha, ha. So first of all, uh, what is the deal with this right here? So muon decay, what these are, first of all, um, this is what provides evidence for time dilation and length contraction. You know, we've talked about in other videos, actually, this is giving evidence for it. So that's actually really nice that we've got some experimental evidence. Otherwise, it just sounds all a little bit crazy, but it turns out, no, no, this is real. So this is really important here to know. So what are muons? Muons are subatomic particles. In fact, they're called leptons. And those are made in particle accelerators, sure, but they're also made in Earth's upper atmosphere, turns out. Uh, just naturally, they form, uh, well, it turns out they form from some other particles that are reaching us from other stars and other places, but basically they come in here at around 10 kilometers high in the atmosphere. Turns out they're made, they can be formed there. So they're formed about 10 kilometers, yeah, above the surface. And their speed is about 98% the speed of light, so pretty fast. And the average lifetime of a muon, this is really important here, is that it's 2.2 uh, microseconds, so times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, we can figure out then, hey, uh, these muons, then how actually, how far will they go in their lifetime? Like, how far will they actually travel? So let's use this equation, you know, the speed is just equal to distance divided by time, for example. And let's just try to get distance by itself. So we'll just get d equals, and it'll just be v times t. So the speed times the time. Okay, that's really all we need. So then we're going to take that then and go ahead and calculate it. So d then is going to equal, let's see, v, the speed of this uh, muon, so that's 0 0.98, times the speed of light. And remember the speed of light in a vacuum at least is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All that times the lifetime of this thing here, which is 2.2 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. I'll do this on my calculator, and let's see what we get here. So I want to go uh, 0 0.98, so I'll do that first, 0 0.98. All that times, let's see what else. Now I need, ooh, times uh, 3 times 10 to the 8, and all that times the lifetime, which is 2.2 times 10 to the power of minus 6. If I do this, I get like uh, 646.8 meters, so around 650 meters, let's say. Okay, so because of that then, keep in mind, what does this really say? This says that, hey, these little particles over here should only be able to go around 650 meters. Okay, fine. In other words, we shouldn't detect them. And yet we do. This is the key thing here. We do actually detect them. We detect them at the surface, which is 10 kilometers below. So how could it be that a particle should only be able to travel 650 meters is actually seen 10 kilometers below? Well, that's actually a nice proof that they do live long enough to get there, so they must have their time dilated. Or you could also, because there's two ways to explain it. Uh, turns out, yeah, you can say their time is dilated, or you can say, well, hey, the distance that they have to travel is actually contracted, so that's how they reach Earth. Either way, it turns out, those give you a really good experimental evidence for the tenets of special relativity, or at least the results of it, which tell us that there is time dilation and there's length contraction.